guys, welcome back to Sinfully Scented. I'm Rebecca and in today's video, this is going to be part one of a new series all about wick testing and candles. So I'm starting off with my standard wax that I've been testing for a couple of months now and I haven't really had that great of results with the wicks that I've tested so far. So I wanted to kind of just stop and I wouldn't say restart because these are new wicks that I'm testing, but I wanted to start documenting on video my wick testing so that you all could see um, what a wick test looks like. The wax that I'm using is the IGI 4627 Comfort Blend Wax. It is a single pore paraffin wax which does make it a little bit difficult to wick because a single pore wax is typically a more viscous wax. So I have had some kind of trial and error so far and I've had a couple that are good results, but I want to make sure that I put out the best and safest product possible. So I am continuing to experiment with wicks until I get the one or two that I like deem to be the best. So again, today's video is part one of this. I hope you stay tuned for future videos related to wick testing and I hope that you get some information out of this that you might not have gotten otherwise. I know that the candle industry as a whole can be very secretive about these sorts of things and I want to try to show you my experience more than anything. So today I'm testing 12 different wicks from four different series. And as usual, check the description box below. I will leave links to all of the items that I am using in today's video and you can check it out for yourself. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the wick testing. So today I'm testing HTP 93. HTP 104, HTP 105, also testing the Performa Wix 100, 95, and 90, as well as CD 12, 10, and 8. And lastly, we're testing the Eco Series, we're testing 10, 8, and 6. So I'm going to light up all the candles. These are unscented, uncolored candles and I'm going to let them burn for a full four hours to determine which candle gives the best melt pool of these 12 wicks. So here we are at the four hour mark and I knew that some wicks were going to be too small and some were going to be too large but I wanted to test them all to see if I got the best results and the four that I thought I got the best melt pool out of were the Performa 100, the Performa 95, the CD12 and the CD8. Hey guys, so it's the next day and I picked out the candles that I thought had the best melt pool and I have relit those and I'll let them burn for four hours today and see if the melt pool is the same as yesterday. Here's my four hour update on these four candles and I can see still that the uh, Performa 95 and the CD8 are doing the best. I do have some tunneling on the Performa 100 um, and also the CD12 did not burn nearly as far out today as it did yesterday. 
So this is why I am doing multiple days with these unscented candles to see how they burn. Okay guys, so here is my day three update. I have been burning the CD8 Performa 95 and Performa 100 for four hours a day for three days. And I am okay with the results. I mean, I'm not super happy because the wax pool is not reaching the edge of the container and it takes the full four hours for it to even um, melt to a point where I feel like I'm comfortable um, not wasting a bunch of wax for my candles. So I am going to continue to burn these until they're burned out, but I am going to do another test with double wick candles. Since I have sample packs of all of these, I have these smaller versions of the wicks and I'm going to do two small ones. Um, just to show you, this is a candle that I've been kind of burning on and off for a little while. And it's got two HTP 52 wicks in there. And you can see that with the exception of just along these two outer edges, I'm getting a full melt pool when I burn this. And I'm really happy with this one overall. Uh, I just want to test out some other wicks. Uh, because each fragrance is going to perform differently, so I want to make sure that I have a good variety of wicks to work with. So I'm going to actually show you guys real quick how I am going to reuse the wax and the jars from my failed candles, uh, the wicks that didn't quite work out. I'm going to show you how I'm going to reuse that. Alright, so here is the Eco 10 that I burned, and there's a couple things with this one. You can see that the melt pool did not get all the way to the edges, and I got some discoloration of the wax. So, I actually don't want the discolored wax because I don't want it to interfere with future tests. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to first trim the wick as close down to the actual wax as I can. And for that, I just used some nail clippers. This is actually the cheapest best wick trimmer that you can invest in like you don't need to buy a fancy ten dollar pair of scissors so I just take the fingernail clippers and I just snip the wick and pull up and that takes you can see that takes the wick out of there and to get a little bit of overhang but that's fine so I'm actually going to be scraping off this discolored layer anyway I'm also going to go ahead and remove the label that I had on here indicating the type of wick that I used. And now I'm going to do my best to get rid of this yellowed discolored wax so that that doesn't interfere with my future tests. So I'm just going to take a spoon and just try to get rid of that yellowed part. So there we go, I've got all of the yellowed wax off and I'm left with a totally white candle. And now here's how I'm actually going to clean each candle so that I can reuse the glass and the wax. I'd like to note that I am just doing this for testing purposes. Um, the jars and the wax that I'm remelting will not be used in any candles that I do end up selling. It's just going to be the way that I produce the least amount of waste while I'm trying to do this wick testing. So here I have a disposable aluminum tray and I have a little metal rack over this. This is just an old rack from a microwave. And you can see I have put all of my candles, I've already trimmed the wicks on all of these and just place them upside down on this rack. And I'm going to put this in my oven. Uh, on the lowest heat that it can go to, which for my oven is 170 degrees. And I'm just going to let this sit in the oven like this for maybe about an hour or so. And the wax will melt out of these containers and it'll just leave the wick in there. And in some cases, the wick will even fall out. So that will help me to save on the resources. The jars themselves are about a dollar a piece and the wax is about two dollars a pound, which one pound of wax only makes about two candles. So this is a good bit of money that you know you don't want to throw away essentially when you're in the process of testing wicks for candles. So here's what the tray of wax looks like after about an hour in the oven at 170. 
So some of the wicks did fall out and they're pretty easy. You can just pull them out like that and there you go. Um, I will melt this down and clean it so I'll run it through a strainer just to get out little bits like this where I've got like some carbon from a, a wick. So like I said, I'm gonna strain that, clean it out, and I'll show you the jar. So some of the jars still have their wicks in them and while it's hot, you can usually just pull the wick tab out of the jar, but you might need to like heat up with a heat gun or something because I do hot glue them down. But most of the time, there we go. So most of the time it just pops out. The glue when it's hot, it's pretty easy to take it off. And then I will wipe it down with a paper towel just to get out most of the wax residue. And then I'll actually just put these in my dishwasher and that will get out any remaining wax residue. I try to get as much of it out as I can so it doesn't uh, clog up my dishwasher. But the hot water from the dishwasher will be enough usually to dissolve any residual wax if you do a really good job of getting the bulk of it out. And there you go. That's how I clean up my jars and my wax so that I can test some more wicks. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys again next week.